Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In this video, I wanna show you how you can create stats for your characters using the gameplay ability system in Unreal Engine 5. So let's just go ahead and get started. So I have this little Sinti character with the Sinti knight I'm using in my Polygon Dungeons pack. If you wanna get these graphics and support me at the same time, the affiliate link is in the description below. So when I hit H, for example, I'll go to level two. And I set a debug key so that when I click G, it'll just showcase my stats. So you can see at the top left, it says, Health is 700, move speed 320, mana 300, and so on. And then when I level up, so now I'm level three, you see that my HP goes up to 900, movement speed up to 330, mana up to 400. I'm just trying to, I'm moving my screen to try to see if I can make it more readable for you guys. And yeah, so I've only set this to five levels. So yeah, pretty much just, or actually four levels in this case. Max HP is 1100 at the moment. And these are just the base stats for your character. So of course, if you add items later on and so on, those can also affect your stats as well using gameplay effects. So let me just go ahead and let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you exactly how I created this. So the first thing you wanna do is head over to edit, go to plugins and just make sure your gameplay ability system is checked. So I have this gameplay abilities and it's checked and it'll ask you, it'll prompt you to restart your project. Go ahead and do that. So as I've said in my previous videos, stats can co currently only be created in C++ right now. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some blueprint update to do that to do that in the future. So I'm just going to go to my C++ classes, right click create new C++ class, and I'm going to look for the attribute set. And I'll just double click on this and I'll call this prime attribute set. And then upon creating this class, I'll just double click to open Visual Studios. So now that I've created my class, my prime attribute set.c++ and my dot header, I just wanna quickly create a macro in my dot header to automatically create a getter, setter, and getting the values of what I create. So for this example, I'm gonna go over the health, but I'll also add a ton that you can simply do either uh, by just copy pasting a lot of what I do, but I'll show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I wanna do is up here where it says include, I just wanna do a hashtag include, and I wanna include the ability system component. And that'll be the header file of the ability system component. And now I'm gonna create a few macros to just declare the attributes. And if you don't like C++, then you should just ask ChatGPT to fill it in for you. And I'll do another video on that shortly on how to get ChatGPT to basically do your coding for you so you can just spend time in blueprints. Every time I call the function attribute accessors, it's gonna call in the class name and property name, and it will do all of the following that's already available to you. It'll just use the gameplay attribute property and it'll have a getter, value getter, value setter, and value initializer. And then below my generated body, I'm just gonna add a public because I want it to be available all and create this constructor that we need to define in our C++. And for this example, I'm just gonna set a max health and a current health. So let me just go over really quickly what this is doing. And now this U property is gonna be blueprint read only. We're gonna set the category to health and it's gonna be replicated using this function called on rep underscore current health. And it'll create this gameplay attribute data, current health, which is our variable, and it'll call this attribute accessors function. And now it'll do this function called attribute accessors that I labeled up here. And it'll pass in the U prime attribute set, which is our class, and then the property name, which is gonna be our current health. And now I just wanna add some protected. I just wanna add some more. And now I'm just gonna add some replication notifies. And this will be something like, it'll call that function that we created up here, which is gonna be our on rep notify. And this is basically just saying, hey, server, like this is how much HP we have, just in case we decide to make a game with party members or multiplayer. And let's say you wanted to create more attributes on your own, then you can just go ahead and just add whatever you want, simply by copy pasting exactly what's over here and just changing the category name and the variable name. So these three over here on the on rep. So for example, let me do one for mana. So I'll just copy paste this and it's not actually gonna be max mana, it's just gonna be mana. So I'm just gonna comment this out for readability and I'll copy paste this, or I'll just copy this name mana, paste it here, paste it here, paste it over here and over here. And that looks good to me. And then I can just copy paste one of these down here and just replace this with old mana. And that's all we need. Oh wait, actually. And then I'll just replace this, the end function, exactly how I put it over here. So this on rep mana will be right here. And that's pretty much all we need. And now I'll go ahead and do this for quite a few more functions. So now in my header, I've declared defense, movement, strength, stamina, I basically just did the same thing down here. And now in my C++ file, I wanna add this include net unreal network because it is gonna be an online stuff and we are using replication. If you don't do this, it will give you some errors. And now I wanna actually initialize the values in my C++. So for the base stats, I'm gonna do current health as 100, max health also 100, defense four, move speed six, or yeah, move speed 600, and so on. And this is just our constructor that's gonna initialize our variables. And now I'll create a function to actually give us that 
replication notify. And now I'll create a function called on rep current health, which is gonna handle the replication notifications for current health. And I wanna do this for every variable. So this is gonna ensure that all clients receive the updated value. So I just put current health and then passing in the old current health that we created down here. And then it'll pass in the class name, the property name, and another property name, which is our old current health that we labeled over here. And I'll just go ahead and do the same thing for every single variable. And I've done this for every single variable that I have. And I just want to, and now I just want to create a function to replicate this across the network. So now this function will actually just replicate our current health across the network. And this is, this super is calling the parent of get lifetime replicated prop. And now I will just copy paste this for all of all the variables that I've already created. And now that this is done, I will just go ahead and save this and launch my game. And now in my C++ folder or in my C++ classes, after launching the project, I'm just going to right click and create a new C++ class. And now that we're back in my project, I'm going to right click and create a new C++ class, which is going to be type character. And for this type character, I'm just going to call this prime character and I'll just hit create class. And now in my prime character.h file, which is my header, I want to include my ability system interface and component. And I'm just going to do that just by copy pasting these hashtag includes interface and component.h. And I also want to include that prime attribute set.h that we created previously, just like that. And now under our constructor, we're just going to set our default values. I want to include that interface method to return our ability system component. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste this in. And now under my virtual void begin play, I actually just want to call my ability system component like so. So under here, under where it says protected, I'll just call my ability system component and then call this the ability system component by calling this u ability system component. And I also want to call my prime attribute set that I created before. So down here, I'll just call my prime attribute set simply by creating a function of this u property, which is going to be visible anywhere and just label it attribute set like so. And then another thing, you might get some errors if you don't extend your public character. So after this, I'm going to do comma and do public I ability system interface and just like that. And now I just want to initialize my attributes just by calling a function called initialize attributes like so. And now I'll start my C++ file. So on my C++ file, I just want to include the gameplay effect in the gameplay effect extension by adding these includes at the top. And then under my primary actor tick, I'm going to add the initialization for my ability system component like so. And then I want to initialize my attribute set. So I'll add these functions. I'm making sure that it's replicated is set to true to enable replication. And then I'll create this default sub object. And then I also just want to add another function right here to return the ability system component, just like this. So we're going to call you ability system component, which is a class ability system component, which is going to grab this function. And then under super begin play, this is where I actually want to initialize my attributes. So I'll go ahead and call this. And then I'm only going to initialize the attributes if the following is true. And from here, I'll go ahead and compile this and relaunch my project. Under my project, I'm going to right click in the content browser and go over to miscellaneous and select curve table. And for this curve table, in this case, I just want it to be a constant. So the reason why I'm doing this is because popular MOBAs that such as Dota, Lee kind of follow the same mechanic where every single character has their own curve. For example, when one hero or champion levels up, they'll get a set amount of base stats to apply to their character. So I'll create this curve and I'll just call this starting stats. I'm pretty sure this is the same method they're going to be using for Smite 2. I'm not 100% sure, but I know this is what they use for the ARPG project. So for example, we can create as many curves as we want. I'll call this one health. I'll call this one mana. I'll call this one stamina and I'll clean this up and let's say um, I'll probably just clean this up and add more to it after I show you guys an example. And now over here, I can append to a new column and this column will be acting as our level that we're going to be calling on our character. So I'll just do something like five levels. So for example, our starting health, let's make it 300 and then level two is 500 level six. I mean, level three is 700 level four, 1000. And then five can be like uh, 1500, for example. And I know this is a really big jump for only level five character, but yeah, I think you guys get the picture. And then I will just do the same for mana at 10 each. Stamina, we can start at 100, then 105, 110, 115, 120, and so on. So you can pretty much define this however you want. And you can even use these as your levels if you want to just have a set stat that your character will be using. And then you can also add stuff like items or certain, you know, if you purchase items from a shop and so on, then that can also affect your stats on top of this as well. This is only for your character's base stats that we're going to be affecting. So I'll go ahead and just try to duplicate this as well as it can. So let me go ahead and play with all the stats that we've created in our C++ or in our code. So I've gone ahead and created some for mana, strength, health, defense, agility, and so on. So now I will just actually add these variables into a gameplay effect so that we can add it onto our character. So in my content browser, I'm just going to right click and create a blueprint class and create 
something called a gameplay effect, which is only available if you have your gas plugin enabled. So I'll select gameplay effect and I'm going to call this GE underscore player stat. And when I double click this, I want to basically just set my stats onto a modifier. So I'll leave this as instant and then under modifiers, I can go click and add an array element. And in this element, you'll see that it has attributes now that I can add. And now when I open this drop down, you'll see that the default stuff, which is none ability system component outgoing and incoming. And now you'll see all the ones that I've created in my C++ or in Visual Studios. So there's a current health, there is a max health, defense, movement speed, mana, strength, and stamina, and pretty much just these because this is, these are the ones that I created. So I'll go ahead and set something like current health, and then I'll create another one for max health. And the modifier that we're going to be using is actually going to be an override. And now for the modifier magnitude, I'm going to go ahead and expand this. And all I need to do is use this curve table that we created earlier called starting curve or starting stats. And I can use the same variable of health that we created in our starting stats over here. And I'll just leave it as scalable float. And you can preview this at one, it's 500, at two, it's 600, three, 700, and all the way to five, which is 1100. And I'll go ahead and set the rest for my other stats. And now I've gone ahead and just set everything to override and then set the appropriate variable to what it is. So max health is health, defense is my prime attribute set dot defense, move speed is also set to move speed and so on. And next I need to open up my third person player character. And now I'm just gonna go over to maybe be third person character, class setting, and then change my parent class to that prime character that we created. And when I do this, you'll notice that we get this ability system component under our components tab that we initialized in C++. And I want to showcase my gameplay effect in here. So an easy way to actually initialize my stats is I just want to make sure we have this ability system component onto our character and we should have this by default. And now at the end of my begin play, I just want to go ahead and just drag this out and initialize my stat. So I'm going to do apply gameplay effect to self. And the one I want to select is this GE player stats like so. And now let's do a simple print string. So I'm going to look for a debug key. And in this case, I'll do something like F. And basically, whenever I click F, I want to print out my HP. And you'll see that it's automatically set to level 0.0. .0. I want to drag out my ability system component like so. And I want to get attribute. So I'm going to get gameplay attribute value over here. And the attribute I'm going to select in this case is going to be our stu max health. And I'll just connect this to a print string. So now when I go ahead and click F, play. And now when I click F, you'll see that it says 500.0 as our max HP on the top left when we print string. So now let me go ahead and display our other stats. So now what I've done is actually just dragged out my string and look for a format text node. And then I just passed in my current health as zero and my attribute or my max health as one. So it's going to show health zero slash one. And remember that I didn't actually change anything on my current health. I've only set my max health in my GE player stats. And a good way to do this is if you level up and you want to full heal your character, you can just set your current health as to the same thing health over here. So now when I click F, you'll see it says health, 100 out of 500 and 100 is our default initialization that we did in our visual studios and now let's actually try this out whenever we level up just like that and now i can actually delete this because i'm going to go set this somewhere else so this is probably going to look like spaghetti code but all i've done was plug in my ability system component to every single stat that we've created including the player level and now when i click a g it's going to print everything so it'll print our level our health movement speed mana strength stamina defense and so on so now i'll go ahead and compile and save and first when I click G, you'll see that level one, my health is 500, move speed 300, mana 100, and strength 10, stamina 100, and it's exactly what I set it to. Now when I click H, it's gonna say I'm level two. And when I click on this G key, to dis when I click on the key to display all my stats, it's gonna show you that my stats have actually gone up. And the reason why it's gone up properly is because I reapplied that gameplay effect right after adding that level up. So now level three, it'll say now my health is 700 and all my stats have gone up by a little bit. Level four, it's gone up again. And then level five, it's gone up to 1100 HP. And that's, re that's really something I love about gas. It's so easy to just create a stat system for yourself. And this is, this is honestly great to me, really easy to handle, really easy to deal with. C++ might be daunting at first to quite a few people, but again, I'll be showing in the next video on how to pretty much just get ChatGPT to do the coding for you if you want to specifically just focus on blueprints. And yeah, that's all from me. Thanks for watching Code of the Row. Like, subscribe, comment what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.